So the next lecture, the recording was corrupt, so I thought I would just simply create a quick tutorial on what we did to resolve the problems for movement with the example project in Calisius. The easiest solution for resolving the project is to go into the demo room .ts file on your server and add a couple of additional lines. The easiest solution is to go to the demo room.ts file and this will resolve all of the movement problems with the cubes if you're doing a group connection to the example project on the server. So if you go to the line 60 of your demo room.ts file, which is located under the server rooms folder, you can start editing the on message move right, which we talked about in the last lecture. You can use the arrow function to go ahead and create the function for your move right system. So right now it is moving right, but this is a, a, a continuous uh, increase in what's being output. Because we're doing the plus equals, the, it goes from 0 0.01 to 0 0.02, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So actually each movement is propagated and or uh, is incrementally increased so that as you hold down the key you're moving faster and faster across the screen. Not only that but the x value never decreases unless you're hitting the other direction, the negative, which is move left. Unfortunately say you're at point 10 or point 1 it then has to decimate or, or go back down and that is count goes back down by 0 0.01 each time so even after nine presses we're only back down to 0 0 0.01 that creates a real problem if you're trying to get the the movement changed very rapidly so there's a couple of different ways that we can resolve this problem one is we go into the Calisius client and make it so that instead of the get access that we are we have been using you could shift to the get key down now using the input dot get access continues to propagate the movement as the key is pressed even if you just tap it you're sending it 20 30 move commands all at once if you use the get key down passing it the d key or the right arrow key that just sends one move command so get key down sends one command get access Sent, continues to send the can command even if you just barely tap the key you'll, you'll send it 10, 15, 20 move commands. That's just uh, how Unity is built so you got to use the right input command for what you want to do. Now I do want the, the keys to be able to hold down the keys and be able to move inside the environment so I'm going to keep my get access because that's critical for what I'm planning on doing with virtual reality later on on a different project so I wanted to demonstrate it to get access to all of my students to make sure that we're we're using that correctly. So back to our demo room.ts file. What the easiest way to fix this problem is in this arrow function that we are creating is to reset the x and y parameter each time for what we're doing. So I'm just going to go in here, cut and paste this and set my x value to 0 before we increase it and do this again and change the y value also to 0 without the plus. This has the effect of resetting it to 0 every time this function is called so we don't continue to increase in speed as we're moving along in the system. This will resolve that problem. So let's copy this, these two lines to each of the arrow functions for the move left, move right, up and down. And as I said, this is the easiest solution to fix the problem. We, we, I've toyed with a couple of other solutions, um, including the get key press, which kind of fixes it, but doesn't resolve the, the incrementing up. So this actually fixes the problem. You'll need to copy this to your local server for testing on, or to your remote server if you're wanting to use this. So let's demo this to show that it is, it is working with the input.getaccess horizontal and vertical and the demo room where we are just simply clearing out the, the increase each time. Back here to my Unity project. 
I'll go ahead and start. And I do have this running on a re my remote server. I've already uploaded it. So let's put in the IP address for the remote server. And I also need to change the game object, what room it's going to. The, the first uh, iteration of this I created as room name demo. The second iteration is room demo two. Kind of makes sense there. So I, you do have to select your game object in your hierarchy and then in the Calisius client script, set the room name to demo2. And now we can create our client. And that has connected, as you can see at the bottom there. And we'll do our join create. And there's my cube. And now when I hold down the arrow key or WASD, it moves around nice and smooth. And everything is working as I expected to. So a few other things that we could do to this particular project is I could add the um, uh, authorized name above the cube when we're, we're clicking on the or, or when we're connecting to the server so that we could see who we were connecting with. Um, this would be a great chance to explore the um, authorization system and logging uh, different players uh, using our database that's that's one thing that we could do with this uh, there's there's several other things being able to change the cube color based upon the player selection all kinds of little things that we could do with this but this more or less concludes the example project using unity and the Calisius JS framework uh, but however, if you are interested in learning more about using the example project or me creating additional demonstrations with Calisius and Unity, make sure you put that in the comments below. I don't know how much interest there is in continuing this without some kind of feedback from you. So hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, let me know that you appreciate what's being created here, and even hop over to my Patreon and buy me a couple of cop coffee to show how much you appreciate this additional information. Uh, let me know what you'd like to see additionally on creating multiplayer game design. I am working on a textbook, uh, should be available very soon on using Calisius with a variety of different clients. The first one will be Unity and then I'm planning on moving into Babylon JS as well as uh, a Lua based either Defold or Solar 2D. I'm more familiar with Solar 2D, so I'm leaning that direction. Um, but what, what would you like to see? Tell me about it in the comments.